Hi guys, Dave in Texas here. What you're looking at is a beautiful little LTD Les Paul uh, model copy. Pretty nice, it's brand new. Uh, so the tag's on it. You're looking at uh, the push-pull pot on it, right? Pretty slick. And the owner, uh, before even playing on it, uh, brought over here for me to set up. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do now. The strings look like they're brand new on it, but I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to put new strings on anyway. And it looks like uh, they're not locking, but the tuners look good, in good shape. Of course, they're brand new, what else could be wrong with them? Of course, I check them to see if they're loose or not. Also, <clears throat> I put on uh, usually better strings with Diodarius than what comes from the uh, factory on these things. There's a lot of times they had good strings too, can't fault those, but the areas I know those are good. And that's what he's requested. So we're gonna cut these off, throw these away. And go from there. The uh, frets don't need to be done, because like I said, it's a brand new guitar. So no sense in uh, going through and uh, working on the frets. So what we'll do is go right to the board, and it's never been oiled up. All right from the factory just as it came and we'll take this uh, tail piece off here to remove all the rest of the strings wow that's don't wear tight it's a tight fit wow that is really stuck in there what the heck okay guys that's a first i'm gonna get a screwdriver to get that out of there Get that uh, post loose somehow. There it came, I think. Yeah, geez. That's what he stuck down in there. I don't want to scratch the guitar up, being as new as it is. And I'll take these strings out. Also, I'm going to set this, uh, this bridge and tail aside. As you can see, it's there. Well, it looks like it's been intonated at the factory, but we'll check that out with this side. Uh, screws point towards the uh, first pickup. Set those aside, get rid of these strings, and get the uh, linseed oil out, as well as all the other test tools. So we'll be back. Okay, now for the, I don't know how many times I've said this, we're going to be using uh, linseed oil on this guitar's neck. We do not use lemon, guys. It's not the thing to use. And I'll tell you one more time why. It's got acidic acid in it. Sorry, it's got citric acid in it. And you don't want to put anything that will break down wood fiber on your guitar's raw wood. Again, that stuff is meant for to be used on wood that has a finish to it. And that nice citric stuff takes off any fingerprints or any goo that we leave by hand prints. Uh, those rings you get on your coffee table, that kind of thing, that's what it's for, right? It kind of strips it uh, extra stuff off there. Well, you want to put that on the raw woods of your guitar. Linseed oil is known as the best that you can use on it. Now, I'm gonna rub this in, let it sit for a few minutes, and then take off any excess, which looks like there won't be any because this stuff's drying in there real quick, just sucking it up. I usually let it sit five or ten minutes, give it a chance to uh, get into the pores of the wood. That's what you're after. Uh, it's not much way you can press it down deep in wood just with your hands. That doesn't work too well. But anyway, <clears throat> that's neither here nor there, right? Think about this is setting this guitar up right and getting it done. And for that, we're going to put a set of Diodaria strings on it, like we put on all the guitars here in the shop. Unless somebody brings their own set in, you know, they prefer something like Slinkies or something of that nature. But we're going to put number 10s on here for him and uh, get this thing set up for him and go from there. So, hang in there we'll let that set up for a while. Okay, we slipped that set up enough. Now we're gonna rub that down and in and off and upside down, you name it. And man, it always makes that wood look so much nicer and cleans up those uh, mother toilet seat fret markers. You know, it does a great job on those as well. So it looks pretty nice. And it's a very nice looking guitar. You know, you can't fault it being so new. All right, so you get all that uh, stuff off of the frets. 
Well, let's check and see what scale this is real quick. I think it may be Gibson scale, and it is 24 and 3 quarters, and we've got just a tiny bit of relief on this neck that I like to see, just a tiny bit, not much at all. So I'm not going to adjust that neck. It already is in good position. So no sense even bothering the truss rod right now. Like I said, this is a brand new guitar. So the thing to do is uh, give this body a quick wipe down, get the shop dust off of it. Okay. Or I can't reach when the strings are on it. And we'll get this thing all nice and polished up. No sense putting on it really, just wipe it down. It's just great shape. There's no dirt on it. Just a little bit of dust from the shop. Okay, now, next thing you do is just string this puppy up. Now, originally, <clears throat> it uh, had speed wraps on the uh, strings themselves. Here's the strings we're going to use. Sorry, where are you, camera? Diodarius. Anyway, it had speed wrap strings on it, which is kind of odd from the factory. By that, I mean there's not even a full turn of the string on the post. And what that's for is that uh, if you're up on stage performing, it uh, allows you to change that string out real quickly if you break one, usually the E string. But uh, it also <laughs> it kind of makes it kind of difficult doing drop tuning because the string comes off your guitar. There's not enough string on there to do that with. You'll understand what I'm talking about. So I always try to get at least two wraps around the post with the strings I put on. So I have that choice. Do I want to do it, you know, alternate tuning? Which is, you know, up to that person, not me, right? But at least I offer them, you know, at least I offer them the choice to do that by allowing that much, you know, string to remain on the uh, posts. Okie dokie. Of course, the sad thing about a black uh, hardware guitar is that the first scratch you see on these things drives you crazy, you know, on the tail or the the bridge. But that's going to happen because we've got strings on here, and they will come in contact, and they will rub. And that's just all there is to that issue. All right, so we're going to take this thing up two posts above, and I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, so get that in there. It's a tight fit. Okay. It's hard for me to see because all the icons that are on my camera viewfinder get in the way of this thing. So anyway, like I said before, I'm going to take it up to the next post, the post after. Not this one, the one after. I'm going to take it all the way up to there. Then I'm going to bring it back. And bear with me, i got to do this backwards now in my head. Okay, bring it back. And since it's going to be wrapped around this way, I'm going to counter wrap it this way to lock it in there, right? Then I'll take my wrapping tool, my little battery system here <laughs> that I've broken a dozen times. First of all, I want to get, make sure my arm's in the way. <laughs> like I said, I'm doing this upside down backwards so you can see what I'm doing. And then start tightening down on it. Now make sure to keep that lead string above it to begin with. But also, each consecutive wrap that goes around the uh, post itself needs to be underneath the one above it to lock that in. You know, lock that string in, which I'm not doing a too good job of right this second. I need to pull up on that a bit. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, get that done right. Get in there. close enough it finishes up my hand okay I'll make sure we're on the saddle all right so now we're in position now this is the same setting it had originally uh, from the factory right same height everything nothing's been changed and we'll see what they had had it uh, set at before the uh, the action level let's see what they had done so clip that off right about there Try to get these pointing in towards the inside of the headstock and keep that away from the player's hands. 
Makes it a little easier on your fingers and hands when you're handling the guitar. You know, the least likely to get stuck by one of them that way. And again, what we do is we level up these posts, line them up. I don't know how these black ones are not too easy. Where are you? Oh, there you come. Okay, so come around. And what I'll do is I'll just estimate how much higher up the headstock I've got to go to start the string off. All right, so I'll be right about here. Should be this, that's where the second post begins, but drop back a bit because the diameter of the string has changed. So I don't need as much. So come back here, right? And we counter wrap it the opposite way of the direction. They're going to be twisting it. So we'll lock it in position. And no sense to twist it under a tight or anything weird. Just, just bend it over the top the other way. And again, get underneath that string right there as high as you can get it. And pull this up as you're doing it. So it'll tighten down real well. And each consecutive. Well, wait a minute. I'm going to get all wrapped up here. Each consecutive wrap goes underneath the next one. That's under, okay? It's like just like we're doing right here. Come here, baby. And these are short uh, posts on this guitar, so I'm gonna start using a little less uh, string on my uh, setup. I'm gonna first wrap it around there. Like I said, you don't need to take, you don't need to go as far up, like to the next tuner, as the uh, diameters of these change and they get thinner. All right, so now we're going to take this guitar up to pitch, right? I keep this in the way, it gets out of the way. There we go. A lot of times people will take these a little bit over or pass just the whole note, say an E to E uh, a sharp, because they're going to stretch. Not me, I won't break any strings. Okay, I'll make it easier. Get my hands in there. Now I'm a G. Well, as I thought, guys, this was set up the factory at four across. These are all at four, which is perfect for this guitar. You know, no problems there whatsoever. Uh, I will check the height of the pickups, make sure they're set up properly and that uh, they're in the right positions. It kind of looks like they're right, but you never can tell. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, on the first one, it's a little high, all right? Not much on the other side. I don't know if you can see this or not. Get my viewfinder in the right spot, okay? So now let's try this one, this side. Yeah, it's a little high. Back here, it's a little low. Low. Okay, it's gonna come down on front. Alrighty. Not too many turns. Down on the front. That's what we come up with there. Oh, that's perfect. Just barely touching on that side. And I'll still have a little bit lower on this side. Let's see how that does. Oh shoot. Go on hands. Well, that's perfect there. Now it's just barely touching. Alright, the other one I think was it too low. 
Yeah, it's too low, so I gotta come up on that side. Wow, that's adjusted a lot. Very sensitive on adjustments. Let's see how that, that does. Oh, it's still too low. Still too low. Okay, I come up a little bit more. Well, that does. Oh, that's perfect there now, guys. Still too low on that side, huh? All right, a little bit more. So much that is a half a turn. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, now they're set up perfectly. This guitar, and perfect. It's gonna be the best it can play once it tunes up. <laughs> Let's check and see how out of tune it is already within a couple of minutes of just being tuned. Let's see, on the E string, we got a D, D sharp, okay? Now it's on E. G, <laughs> wow, the A. It's lost about half. Less on the un, uh, on the other, other strings. So I expect, you know. So there we go. It's ready to play. Now by tomorrow it'll be out of tune again. They'll stretch a little bit more, but that's you know they expected. And the player who comes to get it will get him to play it for us to hear that sounds for the very first time. I haven't heard it play yet. Okie dokie. So it should be happy. It's all set up, uh, you know, as low as it's going to go. Uh, mm, let's see. Let's check something real quickly. Yeah, it's got the, just enough relief on it. And we'll check that neck and that first fret's where they come up with because of the nut. Let's see if there's anything else I can do to this as far as adjusting it. All right. And what I use. Little tool looks like this, and it tells me exactly how high that string is above the first fret. Actually, any fret I want to measure, but this actually helps me tell me, well, is that nut cut too high? Is it too low? What's the deal? And we want to come up with 25 or less, down to 22 for these less Paul types, in my opinion. Of course, that's strictly your opinion. Uh, there's some of the specs, I think, for fenders that will tell you, you know, well, it's gotta be 22 and that's it. Let's see what this says. Let's go to zero. And we'll test that first string. Well, I gotta get it to just exactly on zero. It keeps moving on me. We're getting close. Okay, here's zero. All right, that's at 22 thousandths. That's perfect, okay? This to zero. Ooh, that's at 18. That's a little low. Hmm, not good. So I got a little low in one spot on that uh, A string. Oh, that can't be right. I'm on zero. That shows it's touching almost. Oh, shit. Well, uh, guys, they've cut that nut too low. Because believe it or not, it's not buzzing like a sitar yet, but it probably soon will be because it's down to is that right? Am I reading this right? Eight thousandths above the string of the first fret? That is bizarre. Hold on a minute. There's a sitar sound. There it is again. Shoot, shoot. Well, 
know, it's gonna take much to cause that to go bad. This nut gets a little worn, it's gonna go sitar on him. That, my friends, is cutting it a little too close, in my opinion. Uh, you know, 20 thousandths above, I think it's perfect. You know, most guitars, depending on what, you know, the type of string you're using. But, uh, you know, eight is just ridiculous. That's just too close. And it's, it's, not, it's not been done on a slant. It's not been done on a uh, radius. It's just, uh, you got the A strings been cut lower than the rest of them. That doesn't make any sense to me. You know, the E strings cut lower than the rest of them too. So it's kind of like up and down on the thing. So basically, it really needs a new nut, you know? Unless, you want the, unless you're the school that you can fix a nut by going in and uh, changing it out by putting a glue, putting super glue on it, which I am not of that school, all right? Of course, going out of tune already, real quickly. Well, that's what happens. You're going to have to raise the bridge up now, dog on it. You got fret buzz, okay? All right, so we're going to have to raise the bridge up because we're getting fret buzz. Now, originally it was set up uh, at four thousandths across, uh, which is normal. Even three on the uh, high E strings, E and the uh, E and B uh, on my guitar is going to be down to three uh, three sixty fours. But this one at four sixty fours is fret buzzing. And it's got a little bit of relief on the guitar, so I don't think I want to change the, the uh, neck up any. What I want to do is definitely raise this bridge up some. And when I do that, I always go uh, over the top of it. it. Here's another reason why we put extra wraps on these strings, so we can do this type of work. So you get these all loose, especially the E string. Is fret buzzing on the B the worst and the A? Ah, oh boy, oh boy. So we got to come up, and if we get to 664, so then we got a problem, and then we really have to start looking at doing some relief on that neck, which again, I just don't want to do if I don't have to. So I'll raise it up quite a bit. start with and see where we come out at and what we can play. The last thing you want to do is have a brand new guitar that fret buzzes, you know? A lot of times you will not hear that on amp if the fret buzz is slight, but you'll hear it just, you know, playing just acoustically and it bugs the crud out of me. But uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, set this thing up properly and get it down as low as we can go without the fret buzz. It may be at 664, so I don't know. I want the chest may be higher than that. And then we'll have to do some work on that neck, get some relief on it, bring it back down again, and play with it that way. So hang in there. All right, well, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I raised it 564s, 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 four, four, and four, and no more fret buzz out of these frets, thank goodness, all right? So it raised the bridge up a little bit, but it took care of the fret buzz, and that's what we want, guys. We just don't want no fret buzz in this house. No, sir. And, of course, it'll raise it up minuscule amounts above the uh, first fret, but not at the measure. I mean, it's not going to come up to from eight uh, thousandths to twenty thousandths uh, by, by raising this up to sixty-four. This won't work. All right? It won't happen. And you can see, looking down at it, that the A string is lower. You know, it's looking underneath. You can see it protruding underneath the other strings in profile. In profile. So, uh, needs to be made aware of that. 
as time goes on, this thing's gonna sit tar on him pretty quickly, and it won't be the uh, uh, guitar's fault, it won't be anything but the uh, fact the nut was cut too low to begin with. So next time you hear this thing playing, you'll be playing it, letting you know what kind of setup is, let you know how the setup went for him, okay? Hi right, guys, just got through finishing up his uh, little LTD Les Paul copy. Uh, what do you think about the setup? They're great, and they just sound real nice. Cool, cool. Uh, introduce yourself. My name's Hogan, and I started playing around a year ago. Uh, I live in God, well, I live in Joshua, and I go to school in Godly, in Godly Middle School, and uh... Cool, cool. How old are you, uh, Hogan? I'm 14. Wow! You're pretty good guitarist when you're 14. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and stop here. Just cut. Okay, Hogan, why don't you let's hear what the guitar sounds like. Go ahead. Why don't you put on that uh, high gain channel and see what it sounds like then? Alright. Got it? Yep. Cool. Feels pretty good to you and set up? Yeah, it feels nice and great. It feels nice. Great. All right, guys, any questions? Give me a holler. Dave in Texas. Bye. Say bye. Bye.